اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الحمدللہ نحمده و نستعینه و نستغفره و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئیات اعمالنا من یهده اللہ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی has decided that whomsoever because of his righteousness should be guided Allah's judgment is fala mudilla lahu there is no one who can mislead a person like that on the other hand because of the deeds of the people and how they behave with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says because of their own deeds wa may yudlil ho he decides to leave the person in the state of misguidance and if that happens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fala hadiya lahu there is no one who can guide a person like that afterwards wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah and i bear witness that there is no one worthy of worshiping except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illa allah wahdahu he is the only one la sharika lahu there is no partnership no association with him وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his servant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands in the Quran to live the life of consciousness, of taqwa, of fear of him. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah addresses all those who have already believed and submitted to him. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just by your tongue, but haqqa tuqatihi, as is the right to fear him, as is the right to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then further, this taqwa has to continue because you do not know, we do not know when our last moment is going to arrive. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّا illa wa antum muslimun make sure that the time of the death does not arrive but you are in the state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further addresses all the mankind by addressing them ya ayyuhan nas and this is a very important address because some of the verses we are going to look today inshallah addressing the mankind is a major theme of the Quran, doesn't matter where the mankind live, which part of the world they are residing, Quran addresses all of them about certain things. Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu taqwa, in this ayat have taqwa, O mankind, or all the people, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why? Because He is your Rabb, He is the one who created you. He is the one who sustains you. He is the one who is supporting you. And He is the one who khalaqakum min nafsim wahida. He has created you starting with a single soul, with a single person. Wa khalaqa minha zawjaha. And He created its spouse at the same behavior. Wa bassa minhuma rijalun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the combination has spread a great multitude of males, Rijalan and Nisa and the women. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ have taqwa, have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because you ask each other among yourselves, تَسَاعَلُونَ بِهِ With the request, with the support, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to have each other's problem solved by extending that do this for the sake of Allah, do that for the sake of Allah for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal arham. Have fear about the relationship. Very important to maintain the relationship of the wombs and that extends afterwards to all the relationship of blood which you have in your families. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further says, وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا sadida. When you speak, you speak the truth. You be upright in your speech, in your conversation. Make sure you do not say something which may spread the corruption by the ambiguity of your words. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you do that, yusulih lakum a'malakum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reform for you your deeds. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And he will forgive you your sins. وَمَنْ يُتِي اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ It's the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whosoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obeys his messenger فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا He has indeed achieved a great success. أَمَّا بَعَدْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ Remind each other through the Qur'an. So inshallah I will remind all of us through some verses of the Qur'an. But before that, we should be grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are residing, we are living in a place and in a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided by His mercy the full freedom to practice our religion. Freedom of religion is a blessing in this land, in this uh, time that everybody can practice whatever they want to practice without the fear of anybody else in interfering or objecting or criticizing in their religion. And we can see from the example, before I go to some verses about that, we have just, we constantly observe this phenomena in this land that we practice the religion with full freedom and not we only we but anyone who wants to practice and as a good example last month was the, the festival of Diwali people who follow the Hindu religion they practice without any fear without any worries without anybody criticizing them last week was the time of Hanukkah people of the Jewish faith practice their religion without any worries without any fear in this land this is the time of the Christmas. Couple months from, the, from this time, we will be starting our month of Ramadan and celebrating the whole month without any fear, without any worries that anybody is going to be standing in our way. And, and, uh, and at the same time, in uh, March, the uh, month of uh, New Year of Sikh communities is starting. So they will be celebrating their festivities. So all these religions who can practice their own faith without worrying that another pupil of faith will interfere them is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, utilizing this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what should be our behavior? How should we react? What should we do to take advantage of such a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that is what I want to go and refer to some verses of the Quran. The first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses all the mankind in Surah al hujurat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses, doesn't matter where a person or a humanity or people live, by saying, Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakare wa unsa. All the people, because all the people, right now about six billion people, Wherever they are living, they are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only one God has created them, doesn't matter where they are. So Allah addressing all these mankind by saying, look, we have created you by the combination of one man and one woman. Now this is what important thing is. Allah says we have divided you. We have made you in the shu'ub, which is the nations, qawm, wa qabaila and the communities. So after creating all the mankind on the face of the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has distributed them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided them in the areas, in the countries, in the nations. Not only that, but he has divided them with different languages, with different ethnicities with different lands, with different colors. Allah says that is not any distinction. In my eyes, all of you are equal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says why he has done this division. One word in the Quran, in the surah, in the same ayat. لِتَعَارَفُ So you can recognize each other. You can know each other. You can find out the identity of each other, but that is not 
the reason that one area's people should have any priority over other people. One color should not have any priority over the other color. One ethnicity should not have any, because in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is not the purpose that he divided all of us in different groups and communities. What is the priority? Allah says right after that, inna karamakum in the lahiyat kaakum. The most noble among you, doesn't matter which ethnicity or which language is, the more honored, the more dignified among you is the one who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna akramakum in the lahi atqaakum. Who is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his obedience. Inna Allah alimun khabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge and he knows everything. Now, in the next ayat, right after that in Surah Al-Maidah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has further clarified this distinction that he has made by saying, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْ haja." For each of you, for each community, for each group of people, we have divided you, we have made you into two things. Shira, which is like a sharia, which is a divine way of practicing your religion. Waminhaja and your methodology, how you practice. We know that since the beginning of the time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created different religions, different prophets, and they all pray differently. They did not pray the same way. This is Sharia. This is Minhaja. They live their life within the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted all of those. So, like for us, we, we pray on Friday. The Christian pray on Saturday, Sunday, and the Jews pray on Saturday. All these are variations of the Sharia and Minhaja. Allah says, for each of you, we have created this division. If Allah says, Walau Shah Allah, if Allah had willed, if Allah had wanted, La Jalakum Ummatam Wahida, He would have made you all one Wahid, one Ummat, one nation, one community, one group of people, all practicing their faith the same way exactly all living the same way, maybe all is speaking the same language, but that was not the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by dividing it this way? Wala That's very important. So that he may test you. Whatever way he has placed you on the face of this earth, whatever he has decided that you should practice your life, According to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all this is for the test. Whatever Allah has given you. Now, after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is... Now, notice up to this point, there is no mention of any religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing the mankind because he is addressing the mankind. Now, rush, go fast, compete with one another in doing the righteous deeds, in doing the good deeds, khairat means good deeds. Ilallahi marjiyokum, all of you who are living on the face of this earth, doesn't matter what you are practicing, every one of you is going to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, jamia, all of you. Then what Allah do? Fayuna biyokum, he will tell you, he will inform you, bima kuntum, in that, which takhtalifun you used to differ. Now this is the division that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left upon the mankind. How when we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people of the Muslim faith who have been given the Quran and the last messenger, when we are living in this kind of environment, well, we have the freedom, everybody else has the freedom with peace, without any hatred, without any dis disapproval or disagreement or without any... Uh, on, on prosecution of any kind, what should be our responsibility? That's the few ayats I want to explain. How should we behave? How should we react? And how should we take the advantage of this freedom of religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, instructs the people who believe in the Quran that approach in a very nice way. The ayat is from Surah Al Imran. Allah says, Qul. He is addressing the believers of the Quran. O oh, you, the believers of the Quran, say what to say very politely. Ya ahl al kitab, O oh, the people of the book, ta'alaw, come, let's sit down very nicely, very politely address them. Let us sit down together, let's talk about something, let's have a chat about something. Ila kalimatin sawaim bainana wa bainakum to a word, to a statement, to a matter which is common between you and us. Something that you and us will agree if we want to agree. So let's sit down and talk about that. What is that? Allah na'abuda illallah. That we shall, we shall not worship. You and us, all of us, we shall not worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can call him God or you can call him Bhagwan, or you can call him Allah. Let us not worship anybody but this Allah or this Bhagwan or this God. That's very important. We will not associate anyone with Allah, with God, with Bhagwan. Only we will worship him. We will not be making any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَتَّخِذُوا بَعْدُنَا بَعْدًا أَرْبَابَا And we will not take, we will not choose any of us among any other gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Now, this is the message that we should be able to convey very simple message, very politely, with, with friendliness convey this message to the people of other faiths. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further is teaching in the same ayat, the choice is that they may sit down with you and have a discussion or they may just turn away and walk away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us how to behave in a situation like that. Allah says that fa'in tawallahu If they turn away, if they do not accept your offer of sitting down, Nicely having a conversation if they reject your suggestion what you are supposed to do You don't need to get angry upon them. You do not curse them. You do not be mad upon them Just tell them you are the witness that we have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Amazingly we are making them as a witness Allah is teaching us in the Quran that you make them as a witness that we have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been those who have given ourselves to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the reaction. This is the way we should approach to those who are our fellows in the land of performing and practicing different faiths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further in, in couple ayahs says in Surah Al-Ankabut, in a very beautiful way, is commanding the followers of the faith of Islam how to react with those who are practicing different faiths. Allah says, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Do not argue, do not dispute, do not have an argument with the people of the book. First of all, Wala tujadilu. Tujadilu is from the mujadila. It's a fighting, not physical fighting, but arguing, disputing, screaming at each other. Don't do that. Illa billati ahasan, except by a way which is the best way of approaching the people of the other books. Allah says, but if there are some who are going to do the wrong, leave them alone. Illa ladina zalamu min. You know, those people who will do wrong, just leave them. But those who would like to sit down and listen to you, Kulu, tell them, say to them, Amanna billazi unzila ilayna. We have believed in that which has been revealed upon us. Upon us means the Quran has been revealed. We have believed in that. 
But at the same time, we have believed unzila ilaykum, what has been revealed to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your scriptures. We have also believed on in those books. Wailahuna wailahukum wahid. The message is being repeated in this ayat. Our God and your God is the same God. Our Creator, your Creator is the same Creator. There is no difference in that regard between you and between us. He is Ilahun Wahid. He is the only one. He is the one who commands and creates. And we have submitted to him. Nahnu lahu muslimun. We have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the way, in a very polite way, in a nicer way, introduce your ideas, your ideology, your books to those who are living in peace with you. And those are the people who are approaching you, you are approaching them, you, they are being friendly to you, you are being friendly to them. They, we both or all of us are protected under the law that we have equal rights of practicing our religion and conveying our religion. Nobody is going to stop you from doing that. So with these verses, and there were some more, I, because of the time I'm going to stop, but last ayah that I want to explain is a very beautiful ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fussila, brief ayat. Allah says, is addressing the human being, Muslims, those who have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are following the message of the Quran by saying, Wala tastawil hasana, wala sayyia. The good word, the good action is not equal to the bad or evil word and evil action. If someone is doing evil to you, someone is doing bad to you, someone is trying to hurt you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you what to do. Idfa'a billati hiya ahasan. Repel, return that activity by a good action. If someone is saying bad thing to you, don't say bad thing to him. Say something good to him. If someone is trying to harm you, do not try to harm that person, but try to help to benefit the person. It is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you do that, idfa billati hi asan. Asan is a better, a superlative degree. Someone is doing some bad to you, you much better thing you do to him. Allah is promising in next few words what he will do. Allah says, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ وَدَاوَةٌ Then the person between him and you is animosity, is difference of opinion, is disagreement, he is insulting you, he is trying to harm you. If you return that back with the good, Allah says, it is the promise, كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Allah will turn that person into a best friend for you. So try this approach, you will see the benefit of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us to understand the Quranic teachings and practice them accordingly. Sadaqallah. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم إباد الله إن الله يعمر بالأدل والإحسان وَإِتَا إِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَانِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ اذكروا الله remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَذْكُرْكُمْ He will remember you وَشْكُرُوهُ and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَزِدْكُمْ it's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will increase His bounties upon you وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ and ask forgiveness it is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you ask forgiveness with sincerity, yaghfir lakum, he will forgive you and he will forgive the sins, sins of the people. What taqu, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
yaj allakum min amrikum makhraja if you are in a difficult situation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the difficulty and will bring you out of that situation waqim as-salat and let's stand up and